Hi everyone, welcome to our program. Today I'm very happy to have the attention of Miss Ngo Chang. Chang has finished her master's degree in England for two years and uh, today Chang will share her experiences in studying abroad. Hi Chang, thanks for joining Pip Thug. And now, uh, when did you come back to Thái Nguyen? Oh, hi everyone, thank you for having me. Um, I just returned to Thái Nguyen one month ago. Oh, just one month? It's a short time, so um, do you have any plans after uh, studying in England? Uh, well, at the moment, my plan is to uh, continue working in uh, Taiwan University of Business and Administration, where I used to work before, and then try to settle down after you know two years being away from home. Yes, and um, in England, what did you study? In England, I'm studying a Master of Degree in the Hotel and Tourism Management mm. uh, for uh, one year, and I had about like six months for placement, and also I have uh, six months working. Uh, after mm. I finish my uh, degree. As I know that in Vietnam there are a lot of universities offering the same measure. Uh, so uh, why did you uh, choose to study abroad, particularly in England where the tuition fee and the living expense are the most expensive in the world? Uh, well, it's uh, quite a hard question but uh, what I can say firstly, um, England is one of the top countries in the world, you know, famous for education and um, training system. So basically students in the UK, when they study in the UK, they can have a very good chance to be you know, supervised by the top high quality supervisors and professors. And um, secondly, uh, when you study in the UK, especially in the top university in the UK, um, they provide you a very good networking. Um, for example, they can send students like undergraduate or master's students to uh, have the internship or placement in uh, hotels or restaurants or a tourism company so students can you know um, have it, it can, can improve the um, working um, experience while studying in the UK which is very good for them in the future and one more thing I really like in the UK because students are allowed to work like a part time for example 20 hours per week or maybe 10 hours per week so um, while they are studying, they can earn some money, you know, to cover their living expense, which is very, very uh, expensive. And also, they can improve some, you know, um, uh, um, the uh, working skills so that uh, they can um, put in their CV for their future uh, working. So it's very good about the education in Vietnam. In recent time, there are some short-term means has been shown, uh, especially the uh, quality of graduating students cannot meet the requirements of employers. There are some criticism that students in Vietnam are lazy. Uh, how do you think about this case? Well, um, to be honest, when I'm studying in the UK, um, I have a lot of opportunities to meet uh, Vietnamese students who uh, are given full scholarship by the top university in the UK. Uh, it means Vietnam do have a very good and then talent students, you know, have to try so hard to get that scholarship and also to defeat other students from all over the world to get that scholarship. So, of course, we do have a talent and hard-working student. But uh, at the same time, I think um, the reason why there is a uh, criticism on how lazy uh, Vietnamese students are, I think the uh, first reason is they lack a practical training uh, when they study in university for you know undergraduate program. Uh, for example, compared with the UK student, for example, when they study undergraduate, they can have three years studying at school and also one year working like placement in the industry or like master degree like uh, the degree that I'm studying. Uh, I have one year studying in university and also six months or maybe one year working. So it really helps students, you know, to prepare for them to uh, work in the future to meet the requirements of their future employers. And the other things, I think, is because of the way Vietnamese people are brought up by the families. Like when they study, the parents will say to them, like, uh, "We will pay your tuition fee and all your living expense. So what you need to do, just you know, study." So sometimes they don't have a really uh, plan to prepare right, uh, the time, what, right when they study in the university. Uh, they don't need to care about or what I need to do in the future or what I need to prepare in the future because their parents already prepare everything for them. So I think 
the reason can um, make them a little bit lazy compared with other mm. students in the in, in the UK. Yeah. Uh, yes, it's about students themselves. They are too lazy. Mm -hmm. uh, about the career orientation in universities in Vietnam, yeah. how do you think about uh, this case? Well, um, Vietnamese university, they do not provide so many uh, practical training programs in the teaching curriculum or, you know, they don't have like a internship program for students. For example, when I studied in the UK, um, I had a um, six-month uh, placement where the university prepared for me uh, to do the CV and also prepare um, the um, experience, uh, prepare the uh, knowledge and also the um, skill to do uh, to to eat, to be interviewed. So um, after that, uh, I can send my CV to the uh, company, for example, the hotel or tourism company. And then uh, when I pass the interview, I had a chance to work. So comparing uh, the teaching uh, the teaching curriculum in the University of Vietnam and also in the UK, um, there is a lack of uh, practical training where the university in Vietnam uh, try to you know prepare for students uh, the real practical um, skill or maybe the real practical experience of working that they really need in the future when they you know uh, finish their studying and then uh, apply for any job in the future. Uh, in your opinion, what is the main reason that why um, uh, Vietnamese university lack of um, practical training curriculum? Um, uh, I think not talking about the uh, content of the teaching curriculum, I think the main reason is the Vietnamese university. They don't have a very good or maybe uh, don't have a very wide networking with the companies in the industry. So, you know, they cannot for example, introduce students um, to do internship or maybe placement in, in the, um, the company. We have shown the differences between uh, the education in uh, the UK and in Vietnam. Um, so as, um, as I know that you are a lecturer in uh, a university in Thái Nguyen, uh, after uh, finishing the uh, bachelor degree in England, uh, what would you like uh, to bring from the UK to uh, of Vietnam to Thái Nguyen uh, on your daily uh, teaching? Well, I think what I can do at the moment when I am um, teaching in the university is um, in the teaching lesson I will try to add more you know, practical uh, information related to the industry, related to, uh, related to the working condition uh, to, uh, to um, uh, explain for students so that you know, they can have the update information of how the work condition will be, um, how the real life of working will be, and also, I think I, I will. I mean, I will try to tell them my stories so that um, hopefully they can have more passion or you know or more plan to do. For students who have intention to study abroad, uh, what experiences uh, do you want to share with them? Mm. Uh, well, uh, for the people who you know have a dream or maybe have the intention or plan to study in the UK or study abroad. Um, I think the first advice I can tell them is firstly, they need to have a very good uh, ability of foreign language. For example, if they want to study in the UK or if they want to study in US or Australia or in any other speaking countries, they need to have a very good ability of, of language like English. Not only the academic English but also, you know, the um, ability to communicate with native people in regular basic conversation. And I think the other advice I can give for students is um, they need to have a very clear plan of what they would like to study, what they would like to do. So when they have that kind of plan, I think they will know what exactly they need to go and where they need to get to. And um, the other um, advice I think um, I can uh, tell uh, people is they need to respect people because for example when you live in the UK you can uh, meet a different people from different backgrounds and local cultures so um, I think you need to respect other people from different areas of the world so, and then uh, by respecting people you can you know, learn more from them. Uh, I believe that the experiences you have shared will be very useful for students who are having uh, intention to study abroad.
Uh, and once more time, thanks for joining with us today. Um, wish you health and success. Goodbye.